Hello, everybody. Welcome to the fifth anniversary show, which happens to be our SmackDown celebration today. This is Saturday, February 1st, and we have many special guests. I'm one of the co-hosts, Lori Moffat, along with Peggy George, and special thanks to Tammy Moore for doing the closed captioning. Uh, welcome to uh, Kim Case and Lorna Constantini, who have been co-hosts and have stepped away for a while. Many thanks to you. Certainly many thanks to Steve Hargadon, who's the founder of this, this group. And our special guests today are everybody in the room. The SmackDown does have a live binder. The link is at the bottom of the slide, but it's not live. Peggy will post the link into the chat. Uh, it, the top is a wordle that reminds us of all the guests that have been here the entire year. And all the links are on the side rather than on the top of the live binder. All recordings, including the chat, are posted at the Archives and Resources page at liveclassroom20.com archive and resources. And you can find the uh, collaborate recording, the recording of this show, as well as the strictly audio version and um, the chat recording. The chat log there. Here's where we get to find out where in the world everybody's logging in from. So pick that uh, pointer that is the second tool down on the whiteboard slide and show us where in the world you're logging in from. We usually have an international audience, and we do. It's also warming up here in central Pennsylvania a bit too, Steve. Most everybody looks like they're logging in from the United States. And I will start with our first polling question. How many Classroom 2.0 live shows have you attended? A is 1 to 3 shows, B 4 to 6, C 7 to 10, D more than 10, or E this is my first show. And remember this. This tool is underneath your name right at the top of the participants list. So I'll give every, everybody a chance to vote. And it's a drop down list. This will not work if you try to click on the whiteboard. And you don't have whiteboard tools right now, so you wouldn't be able to click on the whiteboard. But underneath your name, you'll find a letter A until you vote. And then it shows up with the letter that you choose. And I will post those. And it looks to me like D outnumbered everybody else. We've got over half of the room. Yeah, I can't remember either. <laughs> over half the room chose D, more than 10 shows, and a smattering of others. OK, our next polling question. How many Classroom 2.0 shows have you watched as video recordings? This may be a different answer. Same choices as before. A, 1 to 3 shows. B, 4 to 6 shows. C, 7 to 10 shows. D, more than 10 shows. E, haven't watched a recording yet. Similar to the last poll. <laughs> and again, I will post those to the whiteboard. This one's a little bit more split. It looks like the highest number we have is 24% for four to six shows as recordings. Although C 
seven to ten is or seven to ten and and uh, he haven't watched any or a very close second to to uh, four to six recordings. Okay, I think there's one last polling question, and I need to change the tool. So let me change that. The, our third question, have you ever participated in a SmackDown before, either as a contributor or as part of the audience? Give everybody a chance to vote on that one and then publish it. And this one, it's almost half saying yes. We have 48% that have either participated as a contributor or part of the audience. Again, today's topic is the Classroom 2.0 Live Celebration Smackdown. Um, I'm Lori Moffat, along with Peggy George and Tammy Morris, the current host. Special thanks to Tammy for closed captioning. And also special thanks for Kim Case and Lorna Constantini for being in the room today. They have been co-hosts before, and especially for Steve Hargadon, who started the group. Our special guests is ev are everybody in the room. So all of us are the special guests today because a lot of us are going to be sharing. And I think I'm going to turn this over to Peggy now because she's going to tell us what a what a SmackDown is. Well, hello, everyone. It is so great to have all of you with us to help us celebrate our fifth anniversary. This is a really exciting time for us. We had no idea when we began that we would still be here five years later, and we plan to be here much longer, thanks to all of you. I wanted to tell you a little bit about a SmackDown because as we saw in the poll, about half of you have not participated in one before. A learning tool SmackDown is a term that was used by Joyce Valenza and some other wonderful teacher librarians to share favorite web 2.0 tools in a really rapid fire manner. You might have heard of them as speed demos or slams, but they're, they're fast presentations sharing web tools, resources, and teaching ideas. So it's not a tutorial or an in-depth discussion even, but it's sort of like a teaser. Each person will get on the mic and will quickly share the name of the tool, tell you what it can do, and how you could use it in your own classroom. And they have two minutes to do that. In. So Lori's going to be running the timer and keeping track of that so we can get through everything today. There are lots of examples of SmackDowns that both have been face-to-face -face and virtual on the internet. If you Google it, you'll find tons of them. Um, they're also called lightning rounds. You may have heard it called that. There was a fantastic Library World SmackDown that we included in our live binder today because we're borrowing from their wonderful example to manage our SmackDown today. So for our SmackDown, and for those of you who may not have known, people were invited to sign up on a Google form if they wanted to share a tool today and to create a slide for their tool. So as we go through the slides, if you signed up and prepared a slide for our SmackDown, when we get to your slide, you can click on Talk and Share. We have enabled the microphones for everyone today, so be sure not to click on Talk until it's your turn to share or we'll get some feedback there. 
asked. So um, you don't have to ask if we can hear you. Just assume that we can hear you. And if we can't, we'll be sure to let you know. I think we've tested quite a few of your mics already. And we want to be as efficient as possible as we can to get through as many as possible. Um, at the end of the slides, if we still have time available, we want to have an open mic and let any of you that would like to share get on the mic and tell us about your favorite tool. So you'll see that when the, when the time comes, we have added all of the links to our live binder for the slides that people are sharing today. And the bonus today is we're having door prize drawings. And they're just kind of interspersed throughout the show. Some of them are for specific people, like presenters, and some of them are for everyone. So when we get to that place, if that's a prize you'd like to win, then you're going to raise your hand, and then we'll do a randomizer drawing for everyone in that number range. And we will select the winner from that randomizer. And we'll need each of you to share your email address with us if you're a winner. So we have a way of getting your prize to you and contacting you afterwards. So I hope that's enough of an overview to let you know what a SmackDown is. And we are getting ready to start smacking. The very first thing I want to share with you is something fun that I do every year to celebrate the previous year's shows. We are so grateful to all of the people who volunteer their time to share presentations with all of us each week. And so this Animoto that I'm going to bring up in Web Tour will take you on a quick trip through 2013. It may take just a short time to load for you, but give it some time. And uh, when it's finished playing, we'll um, come back to the room and start the SmackDown.
I hope that you enjoyed that. It sure brought back a lot of wonderful memories for me. And a number of the presenters from this past year are in the room today. And we thank you so much. We also like to prepare a Wordle for our year. And uh, this uh, link is in our live binder. And this Wordle has all of our presenters and the titles or topics of all of our shows. So in one place, you get a quick glance at all of the amazing things that have happened this year. And maybe you'll see something on there that you didn't realize we had done a show on. So just go back to the archives and click on the archives, and the recordings are all there for you. All right. Folks, we're ready for our first drawing, just to whet your appetite. And the first prize is an Amazon gift certificate for $25. So if that's something you would like to be entered into the drawing for, go right up there to the hand icon, click on it, and it will pop your name up to the top with a number by it. You should see a little round red number by it. And Lori is going to share with application sharing to bring up the randomizer for us. And in just a minute, you should see that coming up. And I'm watching to see that you've all raised your hand. And as soon as we're ready to run the randomizer, you need to stop raising your hand <clears throat> and then don't lower it because that will change the numbers for people and we want to be as fair as we can for this. Okay, so Lori, is it all loaded for you? It is still loading for me. The randomizer generator. Can other people see the randomizer yeah, generator? I, it's it's loaded on my end. I'm not sure how many okay. people we have. Not all it's of it not yet. Yeah. OK, well, I don't want to lose a lot of time on that. So I'm let's no. stop the voting right now. There are 20, Just give me a number. 26 hands up. So if you will okay. enter that in the, in the number generator and enter the winning number okay. in the chat. 20. 20 is the winning number. Number 20. 20. So it looks like that is Manel. So congratulations. And if you're a winner, be sure to let us know in the chat what your email is so that we can make sure you get your prize. Awesome. OK. Now, we would love to have our mentor and founder, Steve Hargadon, get on the mic and share the first slide to start off our SmackDown. Oh, you're so funny. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> glad to be here. I'm really just, I, don't call me the mentor. Call me the number one fan. Because I, uh, I really don't deserve any credit at this point. Um, but I am a huge fan. And this is a fun project that's worth mentioning. It's the Learning Revolution project. It's at learningrevolution.com. The idea is to bring together everybody who is thinking about learning and how learning is uh, changing with the technologies of the web and uh, put it under one umbrella. So the museum groups, the library groups, educators, homeschoolers, administrators, and to have all of these uh, activities and events under one umbrella. And there's probably more than can be explained in a brief moment, but we have resurrected the host your own webinar program. So there are instructions on the site. Anybody can hold a webinar for free has to be non-commercial and educational. It goes into the calendar and then gets emailed out. Uh, the email is out, goes out weekly on Tuesdays. Uh, and then lots more fun. Lots of really great events coming up this month. We have our Australian New Zealand friendly, time zone friendly conference called Aussie Live that um, Coach Carol is uh, helping to coordinate. Then we're going to do a virtual Learning Revolution conference in March, a school leadership summit at the end of March. Uh, a virtual event on uh, search uh, called Search Matters. Anyway, there's lots coming up. If you're not getting the emails, just join learningrevolution.com and you'll get them. And I just really send my appreciation to Peggy and everybody for uh, 
for the live shows. Just so appreciate all of you. Um, Kim and Laura, I know it's been a while, uh, but miss you. And and Laura and Tammy, great work. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much, Steve. And we did get a chance in our last show to talk about the learning revolution a bit and to talk about the host your own webinar. And we're so excited to have that back. So thank you for sharing that with everyone today. It is an awesome project. All right, we are ready for Paula. Take the mic, Paula. Ooh, that was fast. <laughs> <laughs> it was fast, and the timer is starting. Okay, uh, ThingLink. Uh, I learned about this from um, Susan Aknavad, and she is an awesome person to follow. And what you can do is you can take any image, a photo, um, a graphic, whatever you want, and you can add these little round things to it, which are called nubbins on their site, and the nubbins take you out to other things on the um, internet that have to do with your image. Um, and I really, really love using it um, because it's so easy to use. In a very small, compact space, you can create this interactive image that can take you to 20 different websites all at one time if you want. Um, I had my students last year, my fourth graders, create um, a thing linked to go with the science report they did on animals. And they had to have a rubric, the rubric they followed. They had to um, get a, a common, um, I'm sorry, creative um, commons picture as their image. And of course, their first link was out to where they got their image. And then they had to have a one non-YouTube video on the image, because we can't do YouTube in our school. And then they had to have three resources where, that they used um, while they were writing the report. So the kids absolutely loved it. And after they did it for their science report, of course, they wanted to use it for lots more activities. If you go to singlink.com and look at the gallery, you will get lots of um, great and awesome ideas to use in your classroom. Thanks. Thank you. That is an exciting tool. And my turn is up next, and I wanted to share something with you that is called print friendly. And you may have seen lots of tools similar to this, but this has become my new favorite. Whenever you're on a web page and it's something you want to print out and you don't want all those extra ads and menus and extra things on the page, just click on the print friendly icon and you can install that bookmarklet right in your browser and it instantly will bring up something similar to what you see in the lower right corner of the slide and it, it removes all of that extra stuff. You can save it as a PDF, you can print it, you can email it and it's just a quick easy way to uh, get that content. I found it works really great on recipe sites because there's always a lot of extra stuff there and that's a great way to save it as a PDF and then keep it for later reference. So enjoy print friendly. And Kim is up next. Great, thank you Peggy. Uh, real briefly, I wanted to let you know about FileMail. Um, FileMail is a website where you can go to upload and send very large files. If you're using the web-based version, um, you can send up to, I think it's 25 megabytes or gigabytes. I can't remember exactly. Um, I apologize. 30 gigabytes. And for like the month, but each file has to be like 25 megabytes. And if there is like a desktop version that you can download so that you can send entire folders with a bunch of files. So it gives you a lot of, um, a lot more opportunities and a lot more ways that 
you can send big files if you download what they call their their apps to your desktop and it is free you can also get a paid subscription which gives you a little bit more features but I love this that you can add some as many files as you need and you get a, like a monthly allowance um, that you can send each month up to 30 gigabytes and it's available for seven days and as many people can download it as they want they don't nobody has to register for anything um, you can just send it as is without you or the person downloading it um, that you send it to and you can send it to more than one recipient and all of those people can download it for free for se it's only available for seven days with the free version and then it um, and then you can't download it anymore so that's file mail and I uh, recommend that yeah, you check it out I love it and it's worked great for me so thank you <laughs> Boy, that next drawing came up fast. <laughs> I was ready for Paula to start sharing. We don't need web tour, we need app sharing. And thank you. And Laura, Lori is going to start the randomizer. Oh, goody, it loaded for me this time. Maybe we're making some progress. Okay, so our price for this drawing that you need to raise your hand for is for an amazing book written by Aaron Sams and uh, John Bergman on flipping your classroom. It's called Flip Your Classroom, Reach Every Student in Every Class Every Day. And it is an excellent book. I have it both on my Kindle and as a paperback because I love it so much. So if that's one that you would like to win, raise your hand by clicking on the third icon there it, underneath your name right at the top of the participants list. It looks like a little hand. So get your hand raised. And in just a second, we're going to stop counting. OK. Stop raising your hand. Lori, we have 24. And the winner is. Still seeing 24 there, Lori. Click on Get Random again. There it is. Number 21. Wow, the 20s seem to be a lucky number today. So congratulations to whoever was number 21. And please enter your email in the chat so we can get your prize to you. I don't even know who the winner was because uh, the numbers went away before I got to look. Okay, now we're ready for Paula. Take it away, Paula. Okay, um, for those of you that are um, Common Core State Standards people, um, this is one that you're going to want to bookmark definitely. LearnZillion is a website where you can go and find uh, video lessons, slides, um, sometimes quizzes to help facilitate um, the teaching and learning of the Common Core State Standards. And the way it's set up is that when you go to the site, the easiest thing to do, of course, you want to create a, a free um, account, but I like to use the um, Common Core, oh, I forgot what it's called. Uh, navigator. Thank you. And I was like, ah, I couldn't remember. Uh, but the navigator is what I click on, and then it opens up, and you pick your grade, and then you go to your standard that you want to look at. And then next to the standard, there are these little folders, and you click on one of the folders, and you open it up, and there are the lessons that um, apply to that particular standard. And it is awesome because it has been created over the last couple of summers by what they call the LearnZillion Dream Team, 
uh, which is somewhere about 150 teachers that apply and get accepted. And they attend the Learn Zillion Academy, and they learn how to make these awesome videos that are less than five minutes in length. And they put them up on the site. And it really is a great way to help your kids um, learn the Common Core Standards. And one of the things I do is I actually created classrooms in it. And then you can um, assign the videos to your students as they need them. So you can differentiate the learning. You can have them go back and review videos that they need more help on uh, for a standard. Or you can actually accelerate for you know, those, of, those of your students who um, are a little bit ahead of the curve. Love it, love it, love it. And the next slide tells you more about the Dream Team coming up. I just had to tell you about this opportunity because we have some really amazing educators in this session. And um, you can still apply to join the LearnZillion Dream Team. And the link is here. And what they do is in, invite you to apply. And the people who are selected are um, invited to attend an all-expenses-paid three-day event in June. And that's where they do the training and preparation for the creation of the lessons. That shows you the kind of quality that's going into this, these lessons that are on the site. And then the finalists will go on to become Learn Zillion Dream Team members who create the lessons. And for that, you receive a $2,000 stipend. So it's an awesome opportunity. If that's something you enjoy doing, be sure to um, go right away and sign up, because the deadline is February 9th for part one. And now we're ready for picklets. Carrie Lightner, are you in the room? I am. Can you hear me? Hooray. Yes, go right ahead. Um, hi, everybody. So I just wanted to um, put this tool out there for everybody. Um, some of you may have heard of it, but it's a great little free and fun website that um, you can use in the classroom. It's great using on a whiteboard to um, help teach all levels um, of students about writing and words and um, poetry. Um, it's, we like to call it edutainment because it's fun and it's creative and it's visual. And um, the kids tend to really get excited about it. I think the images. Um, are really can be really inspiring, and there is an assortment to choose from. Every day they change, um, and it's uh, it's a way for kids to just start writing and learning about words and um, using them with these great images. Um, and picklets um, can be a lot of different things. Um, you put the words on the photograph, you drag them onto the photograph. And they can, you can use quotes, you can use song lyrics, you can write sentences. So it can be a great grammar lesson. But the kids find it really fun and it's interactive. And um, we're trying to develop it so that we can get it out there in a lot of different languages. Um, but it's still free. And um, we'd like to take it to the next level. Um, so we're working hard to do that. But hopefully, if you haven't tried it out in your classroom, you can do so. It's a lot of fun. Thanks. Thank you so much, Carrie. And now we're ready for Louise. Take it away. Hi, Peggy. OK, so the Global Classroom Project is not really a tool, but it is an awesome resource for teachers who want to get their class connected globally. Um, you can go to the websites that we have listed there. Uh, this is our third year, our third full year, uh, where we have uh, been having projects. Um, we have over 20 projects this year with over 450 educators and over 42 countries are represented. Um, if you visit the wiki, which is the first site that's listed there, uh, you can go to the right sidebar. 
And we have some really great projects that you can get involved in. Some are very beginner. You could do mystery location or the, uh, the Instagram project that is very easy to get involved with. Or we have some that are recent ones that would be great for this time of year. Uh, Teresa, um, Teresa Allen in the U.S. has come up with the Olympic Hero Voice Thread. And Matt McGuire in Canada has the International Cookbook Project going right now. Tracy Tyndall in New Zealand has a Minecraft project. She actually has two going right now. And then Rose Maneva in Bulgaria has created the Wear the Peace t-shirt project. So these are just a sampling of some of our great projects we have going on right now that you can visit the wiki and find out more about. If you visit our blog, which is the second site there, um, you can subscribe and keep up to date on what's happening with, with the Global Classroom Project and also keep up with our monthly chat. We had three chats well, on one weekend every month, and we do three to accommodate all the different time zones. And um, check out our most recent post. Uh, Robin Tyson in Canada, one of her kids posted about their participation in Project Purist, which is just awesome. They're able to buy six uh, water filters for a school in Nepal. So uh, real quick, I'll be hosting a poster session at ISTE 14. And I hope all of you come by to meet uh, all of our project managers and me and everything else. Two minutes. Woo! <laughs> wow, you packed so much in for that, Louise. Thank you so much for the examples. And everyone will be able to go explore them further on those links. I get to share something really exciting with you next. Classroom 2.0 Live has a new app. And you can access it now. You can see our upcoming shows. And I wanted to tell you that it was created with YAP, Y-A-P-P. And you can create one, too. It's very easy to use. You uh, add your images. You can add things. This uh, image is a little bit small, but you can add things like an invitation page, a schedule. And on our schedule, it shows the upcoming shows. You can add a photo gallery. In our photo gallery, we have the images of all of our presenters. And each time we have a new show, I add the newest image. You can add a Twitter feed to it. So you don't even have to update that. It just keeps updating itself. And you can add videos, among other things. But right now, for the videos on there, I have the introduction to Classroom 2.0 Live and also our latest Animoto. So if you haven't tried Yap yet, take a look at that. The link that we shared with you will give you a way to uh, send that link straight to your mobile device, and then you can just um, access it that way. So, And then you'll get the same thing when you create your own app. So enjoy. And now, Kim. Great, thanks, Peggy. Um, I wanted to share about the Orasma app, and it's an augmented reality, and it's a great way to create um, some really visual 3D tools and documents for your students. Basically, it's similar to using a QR code reader. You will use the app to uh, um, hover over an image, and then it goes into a 3D. And I'd like to show a quick video. Would you prefer the app sharing, Kate, uh, Peggy? The video won't work in app sharing. You'll need to use web tour. OK. Give it I a try. Will, but there's no sound. It's just uh, to show you what it looks like. And um, it's a web really, tour will be best. It's really a, a uh, great way to do and it's very simple. You add these little places, and then when you hover your cell phone over it, you'll see that you'll see that the images kind of come to life, and and that was the still, still image, like a picture. And now he's showing the 3D image of the heart, and he's showing it over another one. 
and it's very easy to make. It's very simple. And students can do this. You can do this for your students to use. And that was just, just a quick sample of the things that you can do. And you can do all kinds of things with like a map, um, anything that you'd like to do to bring those 3D images to life when you can't necessarily do that. Um, so there's an app that you can use for an Android or an iOS device, and you can have your students creating the app, the uh, auras is what they call them that you create very simply, and or you can create them for your students to use. Um, whenever they're working with, um, you can have all kinds of science things that, you know, like the cell and the different pieces in a 3D image. So I encourage you to check it out and use that with your students if you're able to use those devices. So thank you very much. And Paula's up next. Okay, I'm back. Okay, um, <clears throat> this is one that I just recently learned about. Some of you might use ReadWorks um, to get some nonfiction articles to use in your classroom. And then I, we've discovered this one called News ELA. And even though I don't teach English language arts, I believe that we are all reading teachers. And I have found some fantastic nonfiction articles on this site to use in both my science and social studies classes. And what is really, really nice about this, I know it's a little hard to see in the picture that I put on the slide, but when you find an article that you like, you can um, go over on the right side and you can click on the Lexile level that you want the article to come up um, for, it, for your students. So some of them have like three different levels, some of them have four different levels. Uh, they suggest that this is for um, grades four and up, I would say grades three and up if you have some um, very advanced readers in third grade. But what, what I love about it is that I can take an, a news event and find the right reading level for my kids and have them read it. And then not all of them, but some of them have quizzes that are also attached to the news article so that the, you know, the child can read it, do a close reading, and then answer some questions to see you know, how the reading comprehension is going. So absolutely love this. My kids have found some really fascinating articles that they like reading. Um, you know, just be careful. There are occasionally are some things that are for the more mature crowd, so you might want to definitely bookmark the particular lesson that you're going to, to use if you're using it with um, younger children so that they don't have free reign on the site because one of them was about gay and lesbian marriages, you know, and some aren't quite ready to learn about all that. Thank you. And Jill Brown is ready to share. All right. Um, I just wanted to share a strategy that some of my teachers use with Poll Everywhere, and there are a lot of polling, you know, free websites out there. So this is just one of them. I'm sure you can replicate this method with many of those if you have one that you like better. Um, the strategy that they like with this is, well, one, we use the Poll Everywhere because the students can text. And we, we're going one-to-one -one with some of our grades, but, but most of our kids aren't bringing computers to class. But they have a cell phone, and they can share. We can have one kid answer and then another kid answer as, as the teacher's going through stuff. So what they do is they create a poll everywhere that's just A, B, C, D, E, and they always have that waiting um, for them to use. So they may, in class, just decide, wow, I want to give a little quiz or find out a pretest what do kids know in this content area before we get going. And so they can, um, they can pull it up. They pull up then their questions that they have either on a Word document or in textbook software or anywhere that they have it. So if they have the questions created somewhere already, they pull those up and then they resize the window so that they can see the poll everywhere and the questions. And you can hide the responses. So you tell the kids, OK, we're answering number question, question number one now. Put in your response. You can hide the answers. You can. It tells you when, you know, say 20 has been submitted so that you know that they're all in there. And then you unhide it, you look at the results, and then you have a discussion with your kids. Um, or you have your kids talk to each other if, 
they've gotten some of them wrong and then you can clear the answers very quickly, hide it again and either have them um, respond again on that question if they had to do some checking with each other and kind of teaching each other um, and to, to get everybody at the right answer. The other thing our teachers do is use this, um, you know, to prep for tests so that you know what your kids are getting and what they aren't getting. Um, that way you can use your class time value with, with what you need to cover. That's it. Thank you so much. And now, Heidi's turn is next. Hi, um, I'm talking about Nearpod today. Um, it is a free app, actually, um, for the iPod, it, or the iPad, and it's also a free app if you have Nook, um, the e-readers. Um, and what it does is it allows you to share presentations with your students, and basically you can incorporate polls, drawings, um, multiple response quizzes, all those things into your presentation so there's no separate clicker system. They just have to have their device in front of them. It also works with um, Chromebooks, um, basically any internet based and things. Um, and I actually, it, it gives you a pin so there's no student registration. They just go and log in so they don't have to have a separate account. Um, and the teachers just set this up and you can upload your own PowerPoints or PDFs to this and then you can add in the questions and drawing things um, and there's some really neat um, applications with this. And I was going to try and show you one real quick if I can get the web application to work. Um, okay, maybe not. <laughs> okay, that, I can't get that to show. Okay, it's not going to a different page. But anyway, um, it's something I really enjoy um, using and it makes the, your PowerPoints a lot more interactive and um, gets that response. And like I said, and it does have different levels. There's a free version there's a and there are some paid levels too. And the paid levels give you a lot more options, but the um, free version still works very well for the iPad. So if you have an iPad one-to-one, -one, it's perfect for that. And what's really nice is you can share out poll results and all those things, and you can choose to share even the quiz results, but not it doesn't share the names. It just shows what people missed and things, so you can go over that with students. And that's it. We're all ready for you, Lorna. Take it away. Okay, Lorna. I'm sorry. Keep trying, and we'll come back to you. Let us know when you're ready. So we're ready for our drawing number three. So if you would like to win, Wait to, uh, for app sh um, sharing, Lori, until we, they get to see the uh, prize. Uh, this is the book, Helping Students Motivate Themselves, Practical Answers to Classroom Challenges. I'm sure many of you know Larry Falazzo. He has an incredible blog, and he has actually written six books, many of them with a focus on English language learners. This book is wonderful. So if you think you'd like to win this book, raise your hand, and then Lori will take us into the randomizer tool and we'll select a winner. Okay, no more raising hands. Lori, we have 27 people. Number four came up. I don't know if you saw the randomizer, but number four no. came up. Didn't see it, but thank you for telling us. So congratulations, number four. And now we're ready for Tony to share. Hi, hi there. This wiki homepage begins with an interactive blogster. 
I really like this because I've got a, I'm a TA that has a cerebral palsy boy and he is, I'm his reader and his scribe, so I'm trying to find more ways to help him be independent. Um, he's 15, like I said, and so I found this website to be an awesome resource for uh, help. So the poster has all these links to, um, you know, no Heidi was. The one that I have used right now is the text to speech, speech to text. And when it when I clicked on that, it took me to a whole page of resources. Um, we have found that my voice is starting to go when I have to read a test to him for two and a half hours. Um, and so finding a good app um, was one that I really, really needed in order to save my voice. So that will take us to the next um, slide. If you can take that to the next one. That, thank you. The Read and Write for Google is a Chrome extension that I found. Um, I, it's been great. Um, it reads everything on the web. It reads everything in Google Drive. It has a really natural sounding voice and it's not robotic. So I really like that. The other part that helped him in his reading was it has a dual highlighting system. The, for instance, your selection is highlighted yellow and while the, uh, the extension is reading aloud, a bright blue highlighter skims over each word. So, like I said, it reads web pages, EPUBs, PDFs, docs, keys, and all those common files found in Google Drive. It works on um, PCs and Macs and Chromebooks, and there is a 30-day trial. So you can use all the pro features, and then um, and then after the trial is over, you still have access to reading aloud with the dual highlighting and the translation feature. So yeah, I wanted to share that today. Good morning, everybody. I can't believe that. I couldn't make it work. I got rusty really quickly. Before I start, I just want to throw out my thank you and sincere uh, best wishes to Peggy, Tammy, and Lori, who've done such a great job in uh, taking the flagship with Classroom 2 Zero Live. I'm, I'm very happy to see that everything's going a lot better without me. So thank you very much for that. And quickly, Screen Steps is a document uh, creation software that I first found out when I was trying to write a blog post and put in an image and put in a description, and it would take me so much long. I'd do a screen capture, and, and I would have to resize it. And it came up with this software that does all that in a very quick um, way. You can post to a blog post. You can make a PDF. You can put a Word document. So if you're trying to do instructions for anyone, it saves a lot of time. Now, it was a license based when I first uh, got it. And uh, the available is still 2.0. It's still available as downloads for those who have happen to have the license for this. But right now, it has moved to Screen Steps 3, which is exciting because it's a collaborative way to create documentation together. And what you see here on the screen is the interface because on the, on the desktop. And it can also be uh, content edited on the web. So you can work very much like a Google Doc, but it's not quite um, as um, timely. Like everyone's not. Uh, editing exactly at the same time. You check out a document, you work on it, you check it back in, and someone gets notification. If you want to, you put your comments in that way. But it's a really good way to work on a document and work on it together, which uh, was able, you were able to do that before you could save it as a screen steps package. But what you still had to do is open it up and uh, edit it uh, in that way. I know Kim and I had sh shared uh, screen steps packages at one point, but this moves all beyond this. And you can see on the left hand side, these are all steps that you create. So you have a e very easy way at the top left hand corner, you take a picture and you continue on. So I'm going to suggest that you all go to screensteps.com and take a look on it. And best wishes again, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lorna. And now we'll move on to Lori, who's going to share her mix for Ed Simbaloo. Thank you, Peggy. Yeah, I, I use Simbaloo every single day. And I, this is my only public Simbaloo page. And I think I better start the timer on myself. There we go. 
Um, and I created this. Yeah, just the name is, is wonderful. Um, I love the idea of being able to group bookmarks with tiles rather than lists of bookmarks. I do use Vigo, um, and I've got bookmarks in there as well. But I tend to go back to Symbaloo a whole lot more frequently than I do Digo, even though I know some things that I get back to in Digo. Uh, I've got my, I teach online, and I've got all, all four of the rooms I teach in, five of the rooms now, in Symbaloo. So I can easily go to whatever room I need to be in at a particular time, rather than going to the school websites. Uh, like I said, this one is the one I used for my featured teacher presentation back in November, and it is a public uh, Symbaloo page. But I, like I said, I've got many, many, many links that I, I, sh I, I use every single day, and. I, I use both mixes I've made and mixes Symbaloo has made and mixes other people have been have made. Um, yeah, they they do a very good job of um, making sure all those are are current. I'm not sure how it compares to Live Binders. Um, I know you can run. Um, videos within Symbaloo. I have video links to to various places that I've connected to Symbaloo as long as it's something that you can have a link for. Certainly is more visual than Live Binders, depending on the, the page that you start with with Live Binders. Live Binders is a lot more like a, a regular 3D binder with sections. I did try to create Symbaloos for students last year, but that didn't work all that well. Yeah, I do have an RSS feed page too. So yeah, you can put RSS feeds in here too. OK, this is my web mix from Symbaloo. It's one I created for assistive technology in mind. So we have some common apps for autism and accessibility on the right-hand side bookmarked. Uh, they'll take you directly to the iTunes where you can download the free app or buy the app. We try to keep them as inexpensive as possible. If you hover your mouse over each of the tiles, you'll find the name of each of the apps. Even the banner on the top has live links to informational websites for assistive technology. My two current favorites are Bitsboard Pro and Story Creator Pro. There's a light version for each of these, but we found them so valuable for our autistic students that we went ahead and purchased them. Uh, creating their own social stories about the things that they do around the school, including pictures of themselves in their own words typed up, and then recording their voice added to the stories um, has been a learning advantage for them. Apps for the older students now are found on the two lower rows below the banner, and these are the ones that I use every day with my cerebral palsy student, who is academically at par with his peers. So on the left-hand side of the web mix are resources to find iPad apps or to learn more about special needs accessories and inclusive practices. Um, Obviously, I just read what I wrote because <laughs> I didn't want you to miss a thing. But um, looking at, at these apps, um, so many of them probably you have used as well. But we found that these help to pull our students into their own learning. And I, I like to call it uh, earn your learning. They, these are tools that they can use to, to promote and to stay engaged, to promote their own learning, and putting the onus back on the student to be able to click on a link and know that they can go to what they need. And uh, yes, we've used them for students as well. So there you go. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm sharing Lucid Chart. And uh, I also have another link to add here, which gives you examples of a variety of things that you can do with Lucidchart. But I'm just starting to scratch the surface here with uh, what is really available. This is a free tool, which I may have heard about from Richard Byrne. I'm not really sure. But um, the nice thing about Lucidchart is it's not only free 
for education, but you can actually uh, embed it in your Google Apps and have a single sign-on for your students so they can access not only their Google Docs, but their um, Lucid chart projects as well. So uh, going clockwise around my slide, the top left is an example of an eighth grader last year who made a timeline in uh, Lucid chart as one of their independent projects. Uh, top right corner is um, not one of my examples, but one from the community of mind mapping. Uh, bottom right corner, um, we used a Venn diagram to um, compare different years of stocks that were on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And then just recently this year, um, our health teacher who does um, fire escape and, and safety things with uh, fifth grade always had them made a floor plan of two exit routes from their bedroom. And the fifth graders were able to use the floor plan uh, tools in Lucidchart to um, you know, create their diagram. Uh, and it, it was very easy. I would say it's probably a little too difficult for primary. But middle grades on up, great tool set. You can um, share with the teacher. You can share with other students. More than one student can be working on the mind map or diagram at the same time. There is an iOS and Android app, although I, can't, I have not really explored it to see how the functionality works there. And they have just recently added mock-up tools. So if you want to either create uh, an app and you know show your steps, it's right there. And I'll uh, throw a couple other links that will help you, but it's free for education, so it's great. All right, ready for another drawing? Here's our next prize before we move on to Valerie Burton. Um, this is a special prize. This is for anyone who is in the room who has been a guest presenter on Classroom 2.0 Live over the past five years. So if you were a presenter and this is a prize you would like to win, raise your hand and we'll be selecting the winner winner with the randomizer tool. Anyone else? Going once, going twice. Jan Wells, you should have your hand up. Keep going. OK. All right. We're stopping, raising hands now. We have 11 people, Lori. And it looks like the winner is number 11. All right, congratulations. And go right ahead, Valerie. Can you find the talk button on your iPad? Can you hear me? Hello? There you go. All set. You know, I, as I do this, <laughs> but um, Weebly is a wonderful website for you to be able to create e-portfolios or classroom um, websites. It's really easy. It's drag and drop. So if you want to add text, you grab a text box and drag it down. The same thing for images. You can embed videos. It's really simple and easy to use. I use it with my kids. I give them a screenshot of what I want their pages to look like and have them add their pages and then add the information and all to their pages. Okay, thank you everyone. Use Weebly. Awesome. Bye. That was great, Valerie. Okay, and next we have Holly Clark. And I don't think Holly is in the room, are you? I didn't notice, notice her coming in. But so I'll just quickly share the link for her. This is subtext. And the, I'll put the link here in the chat. Oh, Wes, would you take the mic and talk about subtext? That would be great. 
Okay. So Subtext is a wonderful free iPad app that allows you to be interactive inside the e-text that you share with your students. So you sign up for a free account and you do you know, need your students to have iPads, but they can highlight text like they would in another e-reader, but you can see the highlights that they make. You can also do polls and quizzes within the text and you can um, you know, directly share texts with them through the app. So it reminds me a little of Edmodo where you have a class that's private, but the thing I, the thing I love about it is um, it's the only app I've seen so far or application I've seen so far that lets you have the discussions about an ebook right inside the book. And so you can avoid a, what some people might call a fractured learning experience when you're going to different places and different sites. You can just be in the book and not only see what your students are doing, but you can, you know, talk and converse back and forth. So it's awesome. All right, and now we're ready for Carolyn. Just click on talk. Not hearing you yet, Carolyn. Click on talk. All right. There I guess go. I haven't clicked well enough. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is not actually a you know a, a website or anything like that, but I had first seen this mentioned by Kathy Schrock in one of her tweets, and I'm surprised there isn't more info about it. But what it is is it's a CMDisk wireless flash drive. It does cost some money. I paid I think $59 for it at Best Buy, but it allows you to back up from your computer, from your iPad, from your iPhone, uh, onto this wireless drive, and then you can stream from the wireless drive back to your iPad, which you uh, backed up on there, and you don't need a wireless connection because it provides its own wireless network. So if I wanted to show pictures to my aunt up in Camden where there is no wireless, I could put pictures on the wireless flash drive connect to it uh, in settings on my iPad and then stream the pictures right there to show her. And it's, it's absolutely wonderful. You can do documents on this. Uh, you can put music. The one drawback with the music is that it, um, you have to press forward for each song. But I, I'm finding it's working extremely well. I charge it with my uh, iPhone charger plugged right into an outlet. So uh, I think that you might want to investigate this if storage on your iPhone is becoming a problem, and it certainly is for me. With I only went to the iPhone 4S, but I've only got 16 gigabytes. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm really excited to know about it. And this one is my slide, and I just uh, read this blog post this past week, and it was so amazing. I wanted to share this quickly with you. Some of you, many of you may use Google Calendars, but you may not be using them to their fullest extent. And his blog post is a way to add really interesting calendars to your own Google Calendar. You can add holidays. You can add your contact's birthdays. You can add the day of the year, like day the hundredth day so many teachers celebrate, week numbers and more. And you can also subscribe to calendars like our own Classroom 20 Live calendar so that those will appear on your own calendar and you'll have the full description of every show that's coming up. So be sure to check that out. And I'm going to move on quickly. The next one is Carolyn. Hi. Okay, I got caught in the middle of another comment. Uh, yes, I kind of put this together quickly this morning. I was um, on a conversation somewhere on Google Plus a few months ago, and it was something to do with virtual field trips. And uh, they actually took me to this National Geographic site. And I'm going to address the Out of Eden walk first, which was dispatches from the field with Paul Salopek, 
who, as it says uh, on the little screenshot, is retracing on foot our ancestors' migration out of Africa and across the globe. He started in January of uh, 2012, and uh, he just had a blog post January, um, just a, a few days ago in January. And he's invited classrooms to go along. So there's a, uh, more information on the slide, and there's some links on the slide. And then for the National Geographic Kids, uh, which is part of the National Geographic site, Oh my goodness gracious, what a wonderful resource this is. Um, there's there's um, games, there's videos, there's interviews with explorers, uh, there's animal exploration, visits to other countries, uh, there's a place where you can look at pictures, kids can upload their own pictures and talk, you know, uh, talk about them. And I have only really brushed the surface of the site. But as I said, it would take you days to investigate it. And I really believe in personalized learning and getting kids excited about going out and becoming learners, not necessarily something that their teacher um, recommends or that they have to get credit for, but just for the love of learning. So I think this is one of the wonderful sites. And it seems to be free. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow, this hour has just flown by. And so I'm making an administrative decision, and I hope you won't be disappointed if we don't go to open mic since we're uh, past our, our closing time. But I do want to slip in our last drawing. Now, this is for anyone who shared on the mic during the SmackDown. So raise your hand. And if you haven't heard of Google Chrome Pat, Chrome cast. It is amazing. It does something similar to Apple TV, and you plug it in with an HTML, I believe is what they use, and you can view all of your movies, shows, uh, websites, Netflix, YouTube, all those things right on your TV. So if you don't have one of these and you think you could use one and you were a presenter, raise your hand. Get your hands up there. Anybody else? Okay, 10 people. Who's our lucky winner, Lori? Getting one in ten. And the lucky winner is number eight. Congratulations, Carolyn. All right. Well, this has been so much fun, and we are so appreciative for all of you. And now we have a finale. This is our last big drawing. This one is for everyone. We have, thanks to Paula Noggle's uh, uh, efforts, gotten this wonderful donation from um, Simple K-12. If you have ever gone to any of their webinars, you'll know how amazing they are. And they have them all year long. And this is a free one full year access membership, access to everything. The value, if you were to buy it, on your own is $357, and you're getting this for free. So thank you, Paula, for getting um, this support from Simple K-12 for us. And get your hands up if this is something you would like to use. Once you have your subscription, you can go back and view any of their webinars on demand. So if you can't make their live shows, you just go back in and watch the recordings. And they're all 30 minutes long. So they're nice little chunks of recordings for you. OK, going once, going twice, and we have 30, Lori. And it looks like our winner is number 18. Who is that? Sheila Adams. All right, congratulations. 
How fabulous. That is great. Everyone, make sure you leave your email address in the chat log for me um, so I can get you your prizes. So just to wrap up today, can't thank you all enough for coming, for sharing, for supporting our show over the years, and we hope you'll come back often. Now, our next show is next Saturday. We have an amazing featured teacher. Todd Nisloni will be with us. You may know him as Tech Ninja Todd. We're still finalizing the next three shows after that, but then we have a series of two shows, a great presentation on donors choose and how to make it work for you so you can get funding for, grant, for um, projects in your classroom, and that's going to be followed by Donors Choose Part 2, where the fourth chat group of Rebecca Burkoff, Jenny Jones, and Paula Nagel will be sharing their success stories on how to use Donors Choose. And on March 22nd, Erin Klein will be with us as our March featured teacher. And coming up this week is an awesome webinar with Barbara Bray and Kathleen McCloskey. And it is focusing on why hope matters with a guest presenter, Kevin Kroller. So that will be a webinar you'll love to check out. Um, the link is in our live finder, so you can get the link for joining them. Um, it's on Tuesday, February 4th. And remember, you can all nominate a featured teacher. That means you can nominate yourself, or you can nominate someone else that you would love to have come and share with us on Classroom 20 Live. And our survey for today, if Lori could drop this link in the chat for you, it should pop up when you log out of the room. But please fill in the survey if you'd like to receive a PD certificate, and I'll get those out to you later today. And you can subscribe to our iTunes U collection, and you can watch the video or listen to the audio on your mobile devices. And you can also subscribe to the RSS feed if that's an easier way for you to view our shows. So thank you again. Thanks to all of us. And special thanks to all of our 2013 special guests guest presenters. And thanks to Steve, Lorna, and Kim for being with us for this celebration today. And we'll look forward to seeing Kim regularly back on the show. And we love it whenever Steve chooses to pop in as well as Lorna. So thanks, everyone. <laughs>